Hey there, this is Alex Profile with Zdesk Guy. In this training video, I'll be showing you how to share your files using OneDrive, Teams, and SharePoint. I'm going to start with OneDrive, so I'll open up File Explorer, and then I'll go to my individual OneDrive because the file I want to share is stored within my OneDrive. And there's this Word document here. I'm going to right click on the file, look for the OneDrive section in the right click list, which you can tell by the OneDrive icon here, the little blue clouds, then look for the share option. Once I click on this, it opens up the share window. The first section I'll go over here is how to share the file. So if you click on this, it'll bring up the different options. The anyone with the link option does what it sounds like. Anyone with the link can access the file. This is very convenient for the person you're sending it to because they won't have to log into a Microsoft account. However, because anyone with the link can access the file, it's not a very good option for sensitive data, such as if there's social security numbers, credit cards, or just anything, any type of sensitive data. There are a couple of ways where you can increase the security of this option in the other settings section down here. Specifically, you can set an expiration date so that the link will only work until that expiration date. So for example, I could say on Saturday, I want this link to stop working, which means they can only have a couple of days to access the file instead of permanently. So that adds a little bit of security because you're reducing the window that the link will work. Another option is you can set a password. The password will be required to access the file, but they won't have to log into a Microsoft account. So this does add a decent level of security. It's not quite as good as logging into Microsoft account, but it is more convenient for some people. So you can set a password here. Now, one important thing to note is I recommend that you do not share the password and the link together in the same email. Preferably you share the password completely separately and not an email. Instead, do it over the phone or some other method. The reason why is because if you share the link and the password together, and then a hacker gets into that person's mailbox, they'll have everything they need to access that file. They'll have the link, they'll have the password. It won't take them any effort to access the file. So it's a good idea to keep these separate. The second option here is people in your organization with the link. Now, it'll say your company name here instead of Zeta Sky LLC, but basically what this does is you create a link just like the first option, but it allows everyone within your organization to access the file. It's very useful if there's a file that you want to share with everyone in your company that doesn't contain sensitive information or if it has sensitive information that everyone in your company is accustomed to handling and dealing with and can be trusted with, you can use this option. The third option is people with existing access. This will create a link, but it won't give anyone new access to the file. This is useful if you are working with a, a coworker and they already have access to the file and you're just pointing out the file to them and you can send them a link very easily to where they won't have to navigate through the folders and try and find it. For example, you won't have to say, oh, I need you to go to the, the demo team general channel files and then go to this folder and there and you know the whole path. Instead, you can just generate a link, send them the link, and if they already have permissions to access that file, they'll be able to access it. The last option here specific people. In this option, you actually specify who you want to send it to, and they can be internal users or external users. So I'll demonstrate this option here. In the to field, I can specify who I want to send it to. So in this case, let me send it to Olivier. Now, because he's part of my organization, it comes up, shows his name, and it doesn't even need to bother with an email address or anything like that, so I can very easily select him. But let's say I also want to send it to someone outside the company. Well, all I do is type in their email address, 
Obviously, this is not a real email address. <laughs> and select them. And it puts the email address here. And you'll notice that it just shows the email address. It doesn't show a name because it doesn't really know who has this email address, what this person's name is. You'll also notice that down here, it specifically tells you this email address is outside of your organization. Anytime you see this, I would suggest that you think for a moment and, and ask yourself, is this file something I should be sharing with someone outside of our organization? Does it have sensitive information? Is this something they, they should actually have access to? It's a, it's a good check just to make sure you don't accidentally send something to someone external that you don't want to. In this case, I don't want to send it to someone outside of our organization, so I'm just going to hit the X here to remove them. There's a message section down here where you can, if you choose to send it via the send button here, it will send an email to who you specify up here with whatever message you type. Now, this may be a good idea to provide some context to whoever you're sending it to uh, if, if needed, if they might not know why you're sending this file. Otherwise, they just get a generic looking email from a Microsoft email address, not from your email address. And it might look like a phishing email to them. It might look like spam. So there may be some concerns if you send it this way. So adding a message could potentially help that, but it does still come from a Microsoft address when you click the send button. So that sends the email. Now, if you want to actually send it from your email address, what you would do is just hit this copy link button. Now this copy link button does not use the message box. So if you're going to use copy link, I shouldn't even bother to put a message here. But what you can do is you can click copy link, It'll generate a link and it'll automatically copy it, but you can also hit this copy button to copy it again in, in case you lose the link. And then you can send it to whoever you want via email or via Teams or whatever method. Anywhere you can share a link, you can use this link to share it with someone. And that's pretty much everything with sharing with OneDrive. When you, when you actually do share something, you'll notice that it has a little person icon here. That indicates that the file is actually currently shared. Next, I will show you Teams. Now, Teams is a little bit different. So right now I'm in the Demo Team General Channel Files section. And I have this new text document that I want to share. Now, I can either put a check mark next to the file and use the buttons up here or to the right of the file, there's this ellipses, the three dots. I can click on it and it brings up the same menu. So you can do it either way. Now, there is no share option here. So there's a couple of different ways you can achieve something very similar to how you share in OneDrive. If you're sending it to someone who already has access to the file, all you really need to do is click this copy link button. It'll have this link here, and then you can copy it and send that link via Teams or email or, or whatever you want. But this will only work if the person already has access to this file. If you want to share it with somebody, what you actually have to do is up here or in this menu, you see an open in SharePoint option. If you click on this, it'll open up that team within the SharePoint website. So this is that same text document, but now if I put the check mark here, there's a share option up here, or you can click this share button here and it will bring up the same share menu that you saw in OneDrive and it has the same options. Now, if you want to share a file that is in SharePoint and not actually attached to a team, well, you just go to that file like you normally would within SharePoint here, and then you'd share it the same way that I just showed you in the Teams method. You hit that share button and you have the same window. So no matter which method you use, once you get to the share window, it has these, these options you can select here. 
So that's pretty much everything about sharing these files. If you have any questions or issues, please let us know.